So I'm going to pass now to Victoria Banks-Price, who is a planning advisor for the Forestry Commission. Thank you, Victoria. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me along today. Um, I hope you can see me and hear me. And um, well, you giving me a smile. So yeah, thanks, thumbs up. Thank you ever so much. Uh, now to see if I can move my slides forward. Um, so I'm Victoria Banks Price. I'm the Forestry Commission's planning advisor. So just a quick introduction to the Forestry Commission, and um, this follows on really well from um, Marie's um, talk from DEFRA, and um, because we are a non-ministerial government department from, uh, of DEFRA. And so we're responsible for protecting, expanding, and promoting sustainable management of woodlands. And uh, we work with two agencies under the umbrella of the Forestry Commission. So it's Forestry England, who manage the nation's forests, the ones that you make out of the and we've also worked with Forest Research, so they're a GB-wide organisation who lead um, in terms of um, research in terms of all things forestry and tree related. They cover both the urban and the rural sphere. So I just sort of wanted to make a brief connection between the natural and heritage, natural heritage and um, environmental heritage. I think ancient woodland trees are always a quite obvious starting point on that. Um, our ancient woodlands, um, we map it from 1600, because that's when the best maps became available. But in reality, um, it's probably been around since the last ice age. So I just think that's a really sort of it, it, it's just a heritage that's all around us, um, which I think is a really lovely thing to think about. And it's something that we're working on at the moment. I wanted to sort of use this opportunity to talk about how woods and trees are being used in both a heritage sense and in terms of climate change. There's so much noise around at the moment. Trees have suddenly gone massively up the agenda because of the climate change emergency and biodiversity emergency. And, um, one of the things that we're doing in that sense is improving the mapping of ancient woodlands because currently the mapping is provisional um, rather than definitive. And so it's trying to get a better grasp of where these assets are and understanding where our, our oldest uh, trees and woods really are. So just taking us on to the next slide, um, I wanted to, because I'm a planner, I wanted to sort of think about development as well in terms of the climate change and, um, and the biodiversity emergency. And I think one of the um, uh, current reactions to this has been biodiversity net gain. And this is something in the 25-year plan and aspiration to achieve environmental net gain in all development. Uh, Marie's already given you an outline of what the 25-year plan um, means. So I won't go any further in that. But biodiversity net gain, it, but basically the plan set out that we are aiming to leave the environment in a better state than we found it. And um, development is the biggest cause of deforestation in this country. Um, so this is a really, really key area of interest for the forestry industry. And the aspiration of biodiversity net gain is to deliver a 10% improvement in biodiversity value um, on every development that's within the town and country planning act. So, so that, that's most development excluding major infrastructure which falls under a different planning regime. And the first piece of this would be to um, deliver site improvements on site. So things like tree planting on site, green roofs, um, maybe conservation, things like that. Um, so the biggest change or where it might not be possible to deliver on site, but it is possible to deliver on off-site, but trying to have the focus as local as possible. Um, I think one of the things that COVID has taught us is that proximity to nature is incredibly important, and um, therefore trying to get these benefits as close to people as possible is absolutely critical. So just thinking a little bit about the current structure in terms of how we deliver um, environmental gains through the planning process. At the moment, it's quite ad hoc, and it's dealt with um, by individual authorities in different means. It's very much dependent on um, individual um, planning conditions and indeed individual officers and authorities. 
Um, but the, the, the proposed approach is, is will be set out in the environment bill, and the idea is that it will give a much more straightforward black and white approach. Um, and then that means that developers can factor in the cost of biodiversity mitigating in the land purchasing um, deal, so it can be considered up front. So it speeds things up rather than being seen as something added on at the end of the process. It should be all be, all be considered up front. And developers just submit a biodiversity net gain plan as part of their proposal so it becomes embedded in the whole process. Um, I wanted to talk um, about the England tree strategy, um, which, as I said at the beginning, has been an awful lot of noise around woods and trees. Uh, particularly in terms of the climate emergency. And uh, the England Tree Strategy, again, was trailed in the 25 year plan. And uh, this is the government's answer. It, it's not the answer, it is, it, we're looking for the answer. And it's basically the government aspiration and the commitment to the Manifesto has been to plant 30,000 hectares per year by 2025. And we're current, last year we planted just under 13 and a half thousand hectares. Um, so it's a huge aspiration, and it will be um, a big really challenge to deliver this. And the England Tree Strategy is um, one of the things we use to really assess how do we do that and how do we make sure we are doing it right. So the consultation was launched by the Forestry Minister, um, Zach Goldsmith, in June. And um, it's supported by a uh, £640 million Nature for Climate Fund. And um, it's really asking for everyone's view um, on how we deliver and how we make this work. It's not just about getting trees in the ground in terms of carbon capture, but there's so many other benefits of them. So, obviously, there is very much a speed imperative due to the climate change and biodiversity um, um, but it's also thinking about how do we do it right um, how do we get the right tree in the right place um, the big issues with protection and improving the resilience of our existing trees so it's absolutely critical that the source of these new trees is biosecure where are they coming from will they be um, resilient to impending climate change and ongoing climate change, where are they sourcing from? How many degrees south are we going? Are we thinking about local provenance? Well, these are all very hotly debated topics, and we want as many views on this as possible. Um, and you also need to think about resilience to disease and pests. Will we don't want to risk importing pests and um, make any trees that we import? So it's, it's how do we manage that issue? And also thinking about resilience and how they can add to the resilience of our communities and places, as um, Marie was talking about, how can we achieve add to flood risk mitigation? Where can they be planted to a catchment based approach so that they're like existing farmers in terms of agroforestry on the hillside, but then also slow the flow down into towns and cities and reducing flood risk in other places? So, the whole big picture to maximise the ecosystem benefits of this planting. And then thinking again about um, improving protection of woodland from development, again, thinking back to the biodiversity net gain, but also do we fully understand the impact of development on ancient woodland? And um, can we work out better how to suffer development, um, ancient woodland from development? Um, at the moment, we think our, um, things are quite nebulous in that sense. So if we can, if we tie it down with more black and white, with better evidence, um, we think the England Tree Strategy should be an opportunity to help to pull these themes out. And also, we obviously want to bolster the um, timber economy and the, the market for sustainably homegrown timber in this country. Um, the UK is one of the biggest importers of oh there goes Hannah uh one of the biggest importers of wood products in the world so how can we uh, do that locally and finally and and most importantly is engaging people 
how do we engage people in this? How do we make cities more attractive um, with urban trees, but also more resilient to the impact of climate change? Again, COVID keeps reinforcing this point that people need to live close to nature and new development or an opportunity to bring those opportunities forward. Um, so I would just take this opportunity to urge um, anyone um, interested in this to um, get involved in the strategy and put your consultation responses in. I think it's absolutely critical um, that um, heritage is considered alongside many other aspects and it's all fed into this spot because it's a really, really huge opportunity and a landscape changing approach. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>